Now I'd like to think about some of the main types of energy stores and I'd like to consider a jelly baby. Now if I just have this and I hold it perfectly still, what kind of energy is it storing? Well at this time we can maybe just consider the chemical store inside. If I was to eat it or maybe burn it, it would release this energy. And often this is what we have in things like batteries, which have a, a chemical store of energy, or things like food. I could also take this jelly baby and I could start moving it around. And when it's moving, because this has got a mass and it's moving at a certain speed, it then has what we call kinetic energy. So the kinetic store is to do with things that are moving. But I could also put it at a different position. If I was to raise it right up into the air, as it goes to a greater and greater height, it has a greater gravitational potential store of energy. So the gravitational store is to do with how high an object is, especially in a gravitational field like around the Earth. There's another couple of stores. We could maybe heat it up. So maybe we take this jelly baby, we put it in the microwave. Don't do this, it does get really hot. But as we're doing that, what we're doing is we're increasing the thermal store of energy. And finally, the last thing we can do is we can pull it or we can squash it. And when you have an object which is deformed like this, often more commonly seen with things like springs and rubber bands, but what we then have is a store of elastic potential energy. And that's just due to the way the particles inside have been rearranged. So it's these five stores of energy which are the most common and they come up all of the time. So you need to be aware of identifying these when it comes to looking at real world examples. Hmm.